Good morning, my friends. Today is Tuesday, August 6th. It is the Feast of the Transfiguration of the Lord. Uh, Tuesday night at 7 p.m., we have our St. Peregrine devotion. So it's adoration, anointing of the sick, uh, blessing with the relics of St. Peregrine. Uh, this is for anyone, you could pray for anyone with cancer or incurable diseases. St. Peregrine is the, the patron saint. Also an invitation for Be Formed. Uh, if you want to participate and if you want a, a physical book, registration deadline is August 19th. Uh, you can register after that if you don't want a physical um, workbook. What is the Feast of the Transfiguration about? If we look at the Gospel today, so this is Mark chapter 9. Peter takes Peter, Jam um, Jesus takes Peter, James, and, and John up Mount Tabor. Now, I've been on Mount Tabor, and we've had Mass on the top of Mount Tabor, which is incredible to think, well, this is where uh, this happened. Whenever you hear mountains, again, think encounter with God, heaven meeting earth, and of course, they had this powerful encounter. Peter, James, and John were also... Uh, chosen by Jesus to go to the Garden of Gethsemane the night before his crucifixion. They were also chosen to go when Jesus raised the daughter of Jairus from the dead. So this is his inner circle, his top three, if you will. And, you know, we can't be friends with everyone, but as Jesus had his closest friend, probably was St. John, the beloved, Peter, James, and John were his three, and then he had his twelve. It's a good exercise to think about who's my one, who's my go-to person in life, that I can share anything with. Who are my three? That would include your one. And then who are my 12? That would include your one and your three. Something, it's an interesting exercise to do. So they go up the mountain. Jesus is transfigured before them. He he has this, in, you know, countenance of dazzling white. And who appears but Elijah, who represents the prophets of the Old Testament, and Moses, who represents the law kind of representing all of the Old Testament. So we know that Elijah and Moses are in heaven uh, from this encounter. And Peter says, it's good that we are here. I want to make three tents. I want to stay here. And whenever we've had powerful encounters of the Lord, we want to stay there. We want to stay on these retreats that we're on. We want to, uh, you know, not go back down the mountain and watch what happens. So, they, did, they were so terrified, they didn't know what to say. And then they heard the voice of the Father. This is my beloved Son, listen to him. This is also the same voice and the same words that we hear God the Father saying to Jesus when he's baptized in the River Jordan. This is my beloved Son, in whom I delight, in whom I'm well pleased. Listen to him. And so, uh, and then we hear in the, the second reading from the second letter of St. Peter, he said, uh, for he received honor and glory from God the Father when that unique declaration came to him from the majestic glory. And so Peter is recounting what they experienced on Mount Tabor. This is my son, my beloved, with whom I am well pleased. We ourselves heard this voice come from heaven while we were with him on the holy mountain. So Peter is testifying. And that's why this is so important that these apostles had firsthand encounters with Jesus and that's how the faith got handed on. You know, you can say, well, they just made all this up. But think about this. 2,000 years later, this faith continues to uh, uh, go on. And if it weren't of God, it would have died out a long time ago. The church would have fallen apart. But it persists and endures because of the Holy Spirit guiding this church. And so we can bank on it from the account of these um, firsthand witnesses who then you know, Peter gave his life crucified upside down because he didn't feel worthy to be crucified like his uh, Savior. And, uh, you know, would you give your life for something that you weren't sure about? So they were sure about this. And why did Jesus bring them up this mountain? He knew that his own crucifixion was coming. And he wanted to prepare them to say, do not lose hope that even though things are going to look bad when you see me crucified, trust that there is glory that awaits and so this is not just for Peter, James, and John, but it's for you and me as well. When times get tough, when you lose a loved one, when things seem, you know, impossible to recover from, the Lord's saying, here's Elijah, here's Moses, here I am. You know, trust that glory will come in the end. God has won the victory. 
So let us reflect on those powerful moments of encounter that we've had with the Lord, because there will come times like Mother Teresa had these long dry spells where we'll wonder, God, do you exist? And he wants us to remember these important moments to say, I have been with you, I am with you, and I will be with you until the end of the age. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you for your son, Jesus. We thank you for this feast of the transfiguration, for showing us your glory, for giving us hope in the midst of trials. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please continue to like, subscribe, and share these videos with at least one person today. Tune to your family and friends. Buen camino, and God bless you.